Okay, today we're going to discuss the uh, new Wisecam V3. As far as uh, using extension cords and uh, the current cords I've provided with the cameras, uh, currently I have the V3 connected to the standard six foot cord that is um, provided with the camera. Uh, I've got it going through a breakout box I built and I'm using the Wise standard uh, power brick which is um, rated at one amp thousand um, milliamps. So we're using the standard block and their six foot cord. Currently the Wise V3 camera is uh, pulling about 250 milliamps and you can see that our voltage on the um, USB is uh, right at 5 volts. Now if I turn on the um, night vision, um, I'm going to turn the night vision on here. So night vision is on. Um, you notice it really didn't change a lot as far as amperage is concerned. Now I'm going to turn on the um, IR lights. They have two different options for the V3. They have a uh, near. So I'm going to choose near. Let's see what that brings us up to. You'll see that we're at uh, about 340 milliamps. Now I'm going to choose far. And actually, the far RR lights, which are visible here, um, actually lower just a little bit there. So anywhere from 300 milliamps to, it's, yeah, it's ranging right around 300 milliamps. So the most current that this camera does pull is when the near IR lights are uh, on and night vision is on. And we're pulling right around 330 milliamps. You notice with our six foot cord here, that uh, 5.03 volts, uh, the power pack is able to deliver uh, consistent power. Um, we don't have a lot of resistance in this power line. So let's go ahead and choose a V2. I've got uh, two V2s here. And let's go ahead and plug in one of my V2s. See what that's set at. I do have both of these V2s set with the only option for IR on and also night vision is on. So you'll see once it's finished booting. So with the IR on on this particular V2 we're pulling right around 300 milliamps and you can see with the standard 6 foot cord we're at 5.04 volts. So now let's daisy chain these two uh, V2s. I have a second V2 set up the same way with the IR lights on and I'm using the standard uh, six foot cord that comes with it. Let's go ahead and daisy chain that with the other V2 and see what we get. So you can see we lost, um, we're down to 4.99, 4.98 volts. So just having these two daisy chained with about 12 foot of cord between the two, you've noticed that we've lost some voltage. You can see that um, as soon as it settles down here, we had to have right around, it's going to float right around 700 milliamps of current uh, with both of these uh, V2 cameras daisy chained together. The V3 uh, does not allow you to daisy chain um, between this camera and another one and um, I'll show you why that's probably not a good idea to do so. So that is the V2's daisy chained on a standard um, six foot of cord. So now let's try, uh, I'm going to disconnect one of these V2's and take this off and we're going to try a simple ten foot extension. This is a 10 foot extension that I own. I actually did use outside when I mounted three cameras out, um, outside. Um, go ahead and plug that one in. And this is with one of the V2 cameras connected. Okay, Let's see what that brings us to. We'll wait for it to boot. Okay, 
We have one V2 connected to a 10 foot extension cord. You can see that uh, we're pulling uh, a little bit more current. We're about uh, 312, 310 milliamps. But you notice here, look at our voltage drop. We're at uh, 4.95, 4.96 volts with just one single 10 foot extension, plus the original 6 foot of cord that uh, WISE provides. Let's go ahead and try an additional um, 10 foot of cord. Here's an additional 10, so this will bring us up to 20 foot. Let them boot. Okay, pulling about 330, maybe 340 milliamps. Look at our voltage. We're down to 4.86 volts using two 10 foot extension cords plus the 6 foot of cord that comes with the camera. Now let's try to daisy chain these two together. There, they're both daisy chained. Let's give it a second to boot up. Okay, we're at about um, 750 milliamps, but look at our voltage. Going through 20 foot of extension cord plus the two 6 foot wise cables. You'll notice that we've dropped all the way down to 4.57, 4.58 volts, which is a significant uh, voltage drop across all of this wire. Uh, this is what's going to cause issues with your cameras when you have that much extension cord, that much resistance build up. This is what I ran into when I had 20 foot of extension on. I only had one single camera on it and the camera uh, would not recognize the SD card. Every time I brought the unit inside and used just the WISE cable, the SD card would read just fine. As soon as I took it out and connected it to 20 foot of cable, I continually had issues uh, accessing the SD card. So let's try a different cord here. I've got a 25 foot cord here, which was another one of the cords I used. It's actually pretty heavy duty as far as the size of the cable is concerned. It doesn't necessarily mean that the inside conductor is any bigger, but let's take a look to see what it looks like. This is 25 foot, and I'm going to disconnect one of the cameras. Let's put it in. So you'll notice that um, this 25 foot cord, you would think that the bigger outside would result in some bigger cable inside, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. We're all the way down with just one V2 camera on, down to 4.55 volts. Once again, we're pulling right around 330 milliamps. So you can see the voltage drop across this length of wire is quite significant. We're down all the way down to 4.52. Um, that's the range that you're going to start having issues with your cameras when you get that low. Let's go ahead and daisy chain this with the second V2. See what we get. So we got the 25 foot plus the two 6 foot cords. So you notice it goes way below 4 volts. Uh, actually, I think this is going to sit here and this one camera is going to continue to reboot. Um, just because it's got such a low voltage, it goes back through a reboot process. And so there it went again. It's going to reboot again. So once again, running a 25-foot extension and the two 6-foot cables um, definitely is a situation where it's way too low voltage to operate these cameras correctly. I have one other cord to try. Let's try it. It's a 25-foot 
USB cord that I used on one of my cameras in the front of the house. Um, it's a white cord that has a uh, micro USB on it. I have no idea what brand it is. I purchased these two years ago. So let's take a look to see what it's like at 25 foot. And I have to use an adapter here. And I'm only going to run one camera first. Okay, so you can see with just 25 foot of this white cord, we're already down to 4.68, 4.7 volts. Still drawing about 330, 340 milliamps of current. I'm going to go ahead and daisy chain this one. So, daisy chain, let's wait a minute here for it to uh, finish booting. So we're at 4.1 volts with this 25 foot cord on it. This cord actually is faring a little better than this, this heavier cord is, just by a little. So once again we're into that zone where this camera will probably uh, reboot every once in a while because of the low voltage. Once again, if you're having camera issues and using extension cords, I would highly suggest you do not daisy chain and you try to use extension cords that are 10 foot or shorter. Um, I haven't tried all brands, I uh, haven't been shopping for cords uh, recently, but uh, because I had issues with these V2s out there, I was not going to hook up a V3 under these low voltage conditions, so I've reduced the length of my cable out there. There's nothing currently outside that's uh, any greater than 10 foot extension. So I've checked the voltages outside and um, I'm ranging right around the 5 volt mark on all of my cameras outside now. So now I feel safe about installing my new uh, V3 out there.